Hi, I'm finishing the section for three all logarithmic functions. Um, so the next, uh, the next topic is the properties of logarithms. Okay, so we, uh, in the first part, we studied the, the properties of a logarithmic function. The domain is a set of positive real numbers. Uh, what the graph looks like is going to have a vertical asymptote. So we were seeing uh, the properties of a logarithmic function with base A, and now we'll see the properties in, uh, of logarithms in general. Okay, so four. Uh, X positive. Y positive, A positive, with A not equal to one, and any real number R the following properties hold. The first property is the product property. Okay. So that's property one. The product property. The product property says that the logarithm with base A of a product of two positive numbers is the sum of the logarithms. This logarithm with base A of X plus logarithm with base B or logarithm with base A of Y. So the logarithm of a product is not the product of the logarithms. So that's the first note. Um, or, or I'm going to write the notes at the end. The second property is the quotient property. The logarithm with base A of X over Y is going to be the logarithm with base A of X minus the logarithm with base A of Y. Third property is the product property. The, uh, the power property. and says that the logarithm with base A of X to the R power. So this power, you can bring it down as a coefficient. So that the, pro the, the power property, um, number four, is the logarithm of one. So no matter what is the base, as long as say it's a positive number, not equal to one, the logarithm with base A of one is zero. And number five, Number five is the base A logarithm of A. And 
And that's, that follows from the definition of a logarithm. The logarithm with base A of A is equal to one. Okay, so these are the properties of logarithms. The product property, again, the logarithm of a product is the sum of the logarithms. The logarithm of a quotient is the difference of logarithms. And the power property, uh, you have a you have x to some power, you can bring r uh, down as a coefficient. The logarithm of one, this follows from uh, from the definition of logarithm. The logarithm of one is zero. And you can see that because a raised to the zero power is one. And uh, a raised to the first power is a. So a couple notes, and I'm not proving the other three, but they got, they also come from the definition of a logarithm. So a couple of notes. That the logarithm of x plus y is not the sum of the logarithms. or that the logarithm of x times y, and same with a minus. I'm not going to write the minus, but it's the same um, with the minus. Well, you know, uh, you saw the properties, the logarithm of a product is a sum of logarithms. So this is not the product of the logarithms. So I'm not going to do that for subtraction. But for quotient, it's the same way. The logarithm of x over y, or okay, the the base. Let's write base a. This is not the quotient of logarithms. So in the next example, we're going to rewrite each logarithm using the properties. Like uh, the logarithm with base three of two times five. And um, I'll show you in the next section, I'm going to show you how to uh, how to evaluate such a logarithm, a logarithm with base three. If you didn't see it before, I'm going to show you how to evaluate this on a calculator. So from the properties of logarithms, this is the logarithm with base three of two plus the logarithm with base three of five. The logarithm with base four of seven over 18, watch and property. This is the same as the logarithm with base four of seven minus the logarithm with base four of 18. And last one is the uh, illustration of the power property. The logarithm with base five of the square root of 10. So square root of 10 is the same as 10 raised to the um, raised to the one half. That one half, you can bring it down. Oh, well, uh, that's one half times logarithm with base five of 10. And I could go a little bit further. Now, I'm not going to do that, but I could still do logarithm with base five of five times two. But I'm not going to do that. Um, 
uh, we're going to do something more general. We are going to expand the expression as a sum, the difference, uh, and constant multiples. of logarithms without exponents. So the final expression does not contain exponents. It's going to be a sum, it's going to be sums differences and constant multiples. First expression is the logarithm with base three of the cube root of four x y squared. OK, so this is what I'm doing first. If I have a cube root, I'm going to write this as an exponent, as a fractional exponent. That is, um, the exponent is 1 third. And now I can bring that 1 third to the front as a coefficient. Okay, next, I can use the, um, the product rule. So I can split the logarithm of a product as the sum of logarithms. This is one third times logarithm with base three of four plus logarithm with base three of x plus logarithm with base three of y squared. And then uh, this second power, I can also bring it down as a coefficient. So this is one third times logarithm with base three of four plus logarithm with base three of x plus two times logarithm with base three of y. And finally, I'm going to distribute the one third. So multiply each term by one third. Each term in the bracket, this is one third logarithm with base three of four plus one third logarithm with base three of x plus two thirds logarithm with base three of y. Okay, so that's as far as we can go. We have the, the same logarithm, so the two expressions are equivalent. That logarithm of a cube root can be rewritten as a sum difference of constant multiples of logarithms with no exponents. Same question for part B. The logarithmic expression is logarithm with base four of the nth root of x squared y cubed over z raised to the n. So that n root, I can rewrite this as the one over n power. That's logarithm with base four of x squared y cubed over z to the m raised to the one over n. 1 over n, I can bring it down as a coefficient. OK, next, uh, if I have a quotient, I can separate the numerator and the, number and the denominator as a difference. This is logarithm with base 4. So let's see. So this is logarithm with base, this is one over n times logarithm with base four of x squared uh, y cubed minus logarithm with base four of z to the m. Okay, so now I can split that product as a sum as well. This is one over n 
logarithm with base four, x squared, plus logarithm with base four, y cubed, minus m times, logarithm with base four, of z. And that uh, the two and the three, I can bring it down as coefficients. This is one over n. Uh, this is two times logarithm with base four of x. Plus three times logarithm with base four of y. Minus m times logarithm with base four of z. And finally, we're going to uh, distribute the one over n. This two over n logarithm with base four of x plus three over n logarithm with base four of y minus m over n logarithm with base four of z. Okay, so compare the expressions, they are the same. So the two expressions are equivalent, the, first, the, the one in black and the last ones are equivalent expressions. And I'm doing one more, uh, part C. We're going to do the same. We're going to expand this expression as a sum or difference of constant multiples of logarithms without exponents. Logarithm with base five of three x squared over y cubed z to the four. Okay, this one doesn't have roots. And that is going to be what? That's going to be logarithm with base five of three x squared. Minus, I'm using first the quotient property, logarithm with base five or y cubed z to the fourth. And next I'm going to use the, the product rule for each of the terms. That three, that's still a multiple. So this logarithm with base five of three plus logarithm with base five of x squared minus so it's important to write a grouping symbol because i'm distributing the minus that's minus logarithm with base five of y cubed plus logarithm with base five of z to the four and uh, i can bring down the exponents where needed this logarithm with base five of three plus logarithm with base five or uh, two times logarithm with base five of x. Minus three times logarithm with base five of y. And I'm going to distribute this minus, minus four times logarithm with base five of z. So again, the, the first and the last expression are equivalent. And now we're going to go backwards. Uh, we're going to condense the expression as one logarithm. So these are the next examples we're doing. We're going to um, reverse that procedure. We're going to condense each expression as a single logarithm. The first expression is three times logarithm with base six of x plus two. plus one half 
logarithm with base six of x. Okay, so first, uh, the constant multiples we're going to bring in, we're going to bring them up as exponents. So that three, we're going to bring it as a third power and the one half as a half power or a square root. That's logarithm with base six of x plus two to the third plus logarithm with base six of x to the one half. But x to the one half is the square root of x. Um, so if the coefficient is one, now we can bring them together, we can bring them together with the product rule. This logarithm with base six of x to the one half times x plus two cubed. Or if you want, if you prefer, logarithm with base six of the square root of x times x plus three cubed, x plus two cubed. So the first and the last expressions are equivalent. B. We are going to condense the expression as a single logarithm. That's logarithm with base two of x plus one minus three times logarithm with base two of x. Okay, if I have a minus, well, every time I have a constant multiple not equal to one, I need to bring that up. This is logarithm with base two of x plus one minus logarithm with base two of x cubed. And now that, the, that everything is a multiple of one, I can use the quotient rule. That's logarithm with base two of x plus one over x cubed. And the last one, part C. Now we're going to condense the expression one half logarithm with base three of x plus two plus three times logarithm with base three of x minus one. Okay, first we're going to we're going to roll, we're going to uh, condense whatever is inside the brackets. And once we do that, we're going to bring the one half as a square root. So let's keep the one half uh, as a multiple for now. Logarithm with base three of x plus two, there's nothing to simplify. X plus two, I cannot do anything with that. I cannot separate it or I cannot do anything with that. The three, I'll bring it up as an exponent. And now I can use the product rule. This is one half logarithm with base three of x plus two times x minus one cubed. And finally, I can bring the one half as a power. So it's either x plus two times x minus one cubed raised to the one half or the square root of that. Logarithm with, uh, logarithm with base three of the square root of x plus two, x minus one cubed. So those two expressions, the first and the last are equivalent. Okay, if you know numerical values, uh, I'm going to show you how to, in the next section, you are going to learn how to evaluate any logarithm with any base. But for now, let's say, let's suppose we haven't done that. And uh, given numerical values,
we are going to use the properties of logarithms. to evaluate the expressions. Okay, so given that, the logarithm with base six of four is approximately equal to 0 0.7, Seven three seven. We are going to find uh, two logarithms. Logarithm with base six of sixteen, and logarithm with base six of three halves. So we're going to write everything in terms of logarithm with base six of four. Okay, first expression. Logarithm with base six of 16. Uh, 16, we can write this as four squared. And that two, that uh, power two, I can bring it down uh, as a coefficient. So two times logarithm with base uh, six of four is uh, is going to be approximately. I'm just going to keep it as I'm just going to keep it as equal. We know it's approximately equal, zero point seven seven three seven, or that is approximately one point five four seven four. And B logarithm with base six of three halves. So the three halves, if I want to have logarithm with base six of four, uh, what I'm going to do is rewrite this fraction as six fourths. And now properties of logarithms, I can split it as a difference. So logarithm with base six of six is one. And logarithm with base six of four is approximately uh, 0 0.7737. So logarithm with base six of three halves is approximately 0 0.2263. And I want to finally mention the inverse properties. So I'm going to copy those. Okay, so we know that exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other. So if you treat them as inverses of each other, for a positive and a not equal to one, the following properties hold. A raised to the logarithm with base A of X is equal to X when X is positive. And logarithm with base A of A to the X is equal to X. Like uh, three raised to the logarithm with base three of four. Uh, logarithms and exponentials undo each other, so that's going to be equal to four. Uh, logarithm with base 10. of 0 0.001, but 0 0.001 is one over 1,000. That is logarithm with base 10 of one over 1,000. 1,000 is 10 cubed. And one over 10 cubed is 10 to the negative three. So that's logarithm with base 10 of 10 to the negative three. So the inverse property, all that is equal to negative three. And finally, 
Let's give them names. So that's one, two, and three. A logarithm with base seven of 49. But 49 is seven squared. So logarithm with base seven of seven squared is two. Okay, so with this, we are done with section 4.3 on logarithmic functions. Thank you for listening.